Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. So uh, in my talk, I will describe kind of a phenomena uh, in the case of modular forms, which admits, well, which we more or less completely understand. And uh, then hopefully this will be motivation for why the problem I care about is interesting. So to begin with, let's recall what modular forms are. So I have this arithmetic group, so group of two by two integral matrices, which are congruent to an upper triangular unipotent matrix mod n. And there's a slightly larger group defined in essentially the same way, where I demand it's congruent to an upper triangular matrix mod n. So recall that modular form can be defined kind of very analytically as holomorphic functions on the complex upper half plane, which satisfy a certain symmetry condition under the action of this discrete group. So this D to the K Z for all A, B, C, D in one of these groups. The integer k is an invariant for this function, and that's called the weight. Okay, so one of the words in the title. So the basic feature of the situation is that you can collect all these guys into a finite dimensional complex vector space. But it has more structure than just a ve vector space. It namely receives a large symmetry in the form of an action of a polynomial algebra in infinitely many variables given by Hecker operators. So these are labeled by primes, co-prime to the integer n. And despite this very analytic definition, it's a basic fact that this uh, if f is an eigenform, so it's an eigenvalue for the action of all these operators, and it's normalized, which I will explain shortly, then, oh, actually, I guess I don't need it to normalize. If, if I, f is an eigenform, then the system of Hecker eigenvalue that f admits are not random complex numbers, but they're actually algebraic integers. Uh, quite concretely, because this group contains translation by one in the upper half plane, any modular form admit a Fourier expansion. So S here for cus form. So I will impose rapid decay at infinity, and that forces the Fourier expansion of my form to start from 1 and above, and q here is e to the 2 pi i z. So it turns out that you can easily extract the system of Hecke eigenvalue based on this Fourier expansion. Namely, if i1 is equal to 1, then the TL eigenvalue is nothing but the L Fourier coefficient. And so, this, this fact here just says that the Fourier coefficient of the form, if I normalize it to have coefficient of q1, are algebraic integers. So the phenomena is kind of, well, before I talk about this, what happens is that the system of Hecke eigenvalue of f essentially determines f. System t eigenvalue almost determines f in a precise sense. But what matters is that it always determines the weight of k. It always and uniquely determines k. And the phenomena that I want to describe here is that this completely fails if 
I, instead of taking the entire system of Hecke eigenvalue, I take the system mod of prime p. Phenomena. This completely fails. This is first badly if I only take. So, well, I take kind of like this system, but mod of prime p. And the fact that this phenomena happens is extremely important in number theory. And that's all I'm going to say. The rest of the talk, I'll actually study the phenomena. So let me give two kinds of examples. So example one is so the delta function, which is a u, which is the unique normalized cusp form of weight 12 in level 1. And this has uh, a product expansion like this. It's because it's unique, it is automatically an eigenform. And there's another unique eigenform of level gamma not 11 in grade 2. And this turns out to also have a product expansion. And so from this, you see that the Fourier coefficient of these guys are actually integers. And from this series expansion, you see that <coughs> delta and f are actually, as formal series here, congruent mod 11. In other words, the system of eigenvalues of delta and of this form f are the same mod 11. But of course, the weight 2 is different from weight 12. So this, ah, I can't erase this. Uh, okay. And so this is the phenomenon I want to describe. Let me get another example of this phenomenon, which is perhaps a bit more interesting. Well, it's, it's less isolated somehow. So for like, it's a phenomenon of companion forms. So suppose I have an eigenform at a prime, prime, at a level prime to p. And let's say my weight k is fairly small, a bit small compared to p. Then sometimes, but not always, there exists another form g of a kind of different weight, but you can still make it of level n. So either this or p plus 3 minus k, no more than n, such that the system of eigenvalues of f and g are not quite congruent, but they are congruent up to a simple twist. So precisely the relation is L to the 1 ILF is congruent to L to the to <coughs> K ILG mod P in the first case, or in the second case, with an L squared. So such a G is called, this is called a P companion. So to give you an idea of the flavor of this thing, let me just tabulate some examples. So according to my tables, in this corner here, I will list the eigenform. Um, and on this column, I list all the primes less than 3,500 for which there exists a P companion. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, maybe if I raise the board. But well, let, let me finish writing the table and then I'll raise it. So here I'll just list some the delta function and some of its cousins. Like this delta k here are the unique normalized cusp form of the corresponding grade. So delta is delta 12. And here I list the primes for which there exists companion. And there are two kinds of companion as in the example. When I circle it, it means the second type. It's p plus 3 minus k. So okay. This is really heavy. Okay. So if you stare at this table, then basically things look kind of random. 
In particular, there's no obvious way you can kind of get this list of primes based on just information you have on your form direct in any direct way. And so the basic question is that kind of given a system of eigenvalue, what are the possible, where can, for which, like, sorry, for which k and n does it occur in, as a mod p reduction of a system in something like this? Ah. And so then we kind of describe the answer, the classical answer in this case. So it turns out that this question is equivalent to asking for which k and n does phi occur as the eigenclass in as a, as the eigenvalues of a cohomology eigenclass in the cohomology of the arithmetic group with respect to a suitable representation of the arithmetic group. So in terms of time and skipping how this induction made would basically system of eigenvalues modal forms occur in characteristic zero cohomology of this thing. And mod p systems is then equivalent to asking where does it occur in mod p cohomology. And this breaks the answer into two steps. The first step, so the first source of congruence is because irreducible characteristic zero representation frequently become reducible mod p. And so all this cohomology groups are built out of more primitive pieces. Namely, built out of, oh, I guess I've copied the same thing again. But here, I can make it so that the level is prime to p, and I can make k minus 2 is between. Or, or rather, you should think of this as the question system comes from, this is the same as this representation here comes from an irrep of a finite group of lead type. So in this case, it's SL2 FP. And so this suggests that the correct <coughs> notion of weight for mod p modular form is not an integer k, but rather an irreducible modular representation of SL2 FP. And so this, this thing, this phenomenon, actually explains the first example. But uh, I will not explain it in the interest of time. You can ask me why, if you're interested. But this is not quite the phenomenon that I'm interested in, because this is, in some sense, just reducing to a question of representation theory. And this is a kind of operation you can do purely in the world of uh, cohomology of arithmetic group. This step two is the deeper step, namely that it actually happens that a given system of mod p Hecker eigenvalue can occur even in two different atomic pieces. Can occur in multiple kind of building blocks. So you could take step one is like factorizing an integer into primes, and step two is like understanding the primes. It's unsurprisingly, step two is the harder one. And so the classical answer to this phenomena, namely to understand where exactly can phi occur, reduces to a question of representation theory and the question of determine on which irreducible model representation uh, is, does this system show up. And this is uh, given by the classical term due to the work of many people, at x Ribet cross, so on. And basically, the answer is that a system of Hecke eigenvalue that occurs in the cohomology of the arithmetic group will have an attached Galois representation. In this case, it's two dimensional. And the list of shared weights for which the system shows up is given by an explicitly constructed list constructed out of a very tiny piece of this Galois parameter, out of namely 
just the restriction of the scalar parameter on inertia at p. And this actually explains this companion form phenomena. Namely, I will not explain what this list is, but I will explain its feature. Namely, usually, the size of this list is actually pretty small. It's one or two. And this two happens if and only if the Galois parameter on inertia is tamely ramified. And this two here exactly corresponds to the exist companion forms. And because there are two ways in which the uh, Galois representation of GQ at P can be tamely ramified, so it corresponds to two ways, two kinds of companion forms. And so I'm essentially out of time, so let me just say the problem I'm interested in is basically to do all this for higher rank groups. And well, maybe I actually write that. So the problem is so do all this for higher rank groups. So congruent subgroups of things like unity groups in n variable over number fields, or GLN, maybe. And let me just say that already con constructing the right candidate list is a tricky business. Uh, for a long time, people don't know kind of what the precise list is. And Florian Herzig has made a general conjecture on what this list should be in the tame case. So in the, in the sense, in this case where there are maximal number of companions. And the list is extremely complicated. It has the flavor of reducing a delin lustig representation mod p. And that grows combinatorially uh, very complicated with the rank of the group. Part of the problem that I'm interested in is to formulate the precise lists, even in the wild ramification, of course, prove it. But, yeah. So uh, I'm out of time, so let me stop here.